he still hasn't gotten over the fact that his nickname is Stinky and that I call him Stinky all the time because he's a stinky little boy. This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Edge don't want you to hear them. Because he, he, uh, I sued his radio show because they were doing right to no requests and they weren't paying for them. They were being given certain documents for certain individuals but not for others. So the city of Manchester would give documents to Gerard for people that they didn't particularly care for, but on the other side, they would make excuses to not give documents for people like Danny O'Neill, who is the ultimate Democrat in the city of Manchester, who was the chairman of the board, but when Gerard would ask for, you know, the documents on the emails and go back and forth between me and any other person, they wouldn't give him the Democrat ones. And I thought that was unfair. Well, is there a reason why you were suing to try and get more people to have to pay money as opposed no, to suing to try no. and get less people to no, pay every, less money? Everybody I mean, else seemed to have to pay, just not him. Are you in favor of people having to pay so much money for... No, they pay the same amount that you pay for when you get a right to know request at the state. It's not any different. Well, my understanding is, though, they're charging 50 cents a page for electronic documents. It could be hundreds of dollars to get anywhere. I don't, I don't know if that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Right. I'm not sure. I think that the problem with that is, is when you make a request for every single email that's ever gone to... Like, in my case, it was oh, 1,800 emails. So when you make a request for 1,800 emails, they have to have a lot of work has to go into redacting names. And a lot of them have to go into redacting, uh, you know, certain things like phone numbers, things like that. But in his instance, he wanted copies of emails that were from a constituent to another alderman. I thought that was a privacy issue. I was um, not happy with the fact that people would write to me about the police department saying that they weren't happy with the police department their name would be attached, their email would be attached, their address or their phone number would be attached. But Gerard would get them in some big sweep and then be able to put them on his website for anybody to see. I'm very, very strong. Kind of like New Hampshire's WikiLeaks. <laughs> oh, yeah, kind of. Well, no, that's not... Yeah, I don't know if you look at it that way. Actually, um, the police department actually leaked those out, but the police department would leak out the ones they want. They would leak out the ones that they didn't want. So they can make a determination of whichever ones. The city didn't have any sort of a written policy at all. Now we have a written policy. Whether the cost for the electronic part of it is is good or not, I'm not sure I agree with 50 cents per page. Um, yeah. But that's something he can go to court on and probably work that out or bring something up and we can change that at the future date. That wasn't my original intent of going to, um, this, to uh, court at all. My original intent was to keep, make sure that constituents can write to their government officials on a one-on-one -on -one basis and be able to keep their private information um, secure, such as their address, their name, their telephone number, and their phone number. Uh, a huge privacy guy when it comes to that stuff. Okay. And what happens is, you know, emails come through the web server through the city, they come to me. But if you wrote me an email direct because you had my email address, that wouldn't be subject to a right to know request. But just because it's circuit to, it's like the postman. Every letter that gets delivered by the post office to your house, is that subject to a right to know request? Well, just because it went through the government server into my yeah. into my privacy uh, email, does that mean that it should be subject to a right to know request? I didn't think that that was fair to people who were writing to their people and complaining. I'd like to have more people writing to us and complaining without fear of retribution. Oh. So that was my main issue. Right or wrong, at least you answer questions. I do. So yeah. Kelly Lavassi, yeah. thanks well, for the time. That's the position that I took, and I think it worked out well for people who were writing emails to their government officials. Appreciate it. Okay, Appreciate but as long as, as far as a feud between myself and Mr. Gerard, I think he still hasn't gotten over the fact that I ran for mayor and he ran for mayor against Squad Baines. Um, he really criticized me for that, saying that if I hadn't run, he thinks he would have won. And um, I didn't know that, you know, you had a, you, you can't force somebody to not run for election. But he still hasn't gotten over that. And then he still hasn't gotten over the fact that his nickname is Stinky and that I call him Stinky all the time because he's a stinky little boy. Okay? Okay. <laughs> enough? <laughs> Take care. All right. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too, at sat.lrn.fm.
That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.